Hello and welcome back. It's me again, uh, and it's only been a week. That's pretty crazy. Real quick, if you would like to be in a future Door Monster video, or the guards themselves, you can kind of. All you have to do is send me a photo scan of yourself, which is just a whole bunch of pictures, and I will add it to a digital library. There are instructions for how to do it in the description of this video, and uh, I also went over it in the last video I uploaded. Today's just gonna be showing off uh, some more little snippets of past projects. The concept that got me interested in doing the Blender stuff last year in the first place is uh, digital set extensions. This shot from Empire of Sin, 100% CGI, the people are photo scans. Um, and last time I focused on that part, but this time I want to focus on the environment just because it gives a really good example of the technique that I use uh, even when we are using actual video footage. If you picture an actual, like a school projector projecting something onto a screen, right? That'd be the most basic version. But what's happening here is you're setting up like cubes and cylinders and different shapes. It's a little bit easier just to see it than it is to describe it because if I rotate the camera, uh, this is a mess, right? This doesn't work at all unless you're viewing it directly from the perspective of the camera which is also projecting the texture. It's like that chalk art that you see sometimes where people will draw an elongated image on the ground and then depending on where you stand, it looks three-dimensional. Quick preview of the shot from the guards themselves that I'm working on. I'm uh, replacing the background with buildings. And just like the Empire of Sin video, this looks more or less correct uh, as long as you're looking at it from the angle of the camera. But if you move and you look at it from a different angle, it looks like this. We can actually see the perspective change as we scrub through the timeline and the video is like shining out like it's a light from the camera itself. One immediate application of this is that you can actually uh, relight a scene. These are our photo scans from Phasmophobia and I put this shot together as sort of a test just to see if I could make like a completely CGI scene that passed as semi-realistic. All I did, as you can see here, is project the image onto some like really basic geometry and then just animate the camera pushing forward a little bit. And now the scene feels like it has depth. I was able to run some Mixamo animation animations on the 3D models of us and just have that little fight going on in the background. It's kind of like photo scanning a location except just from one angle. Not only is the texture being projected onto the geometry, but it's also casting light from the geometry that it's uh, projected onto. They recently built this system in real life to film The Mandalorian. You've probably seen the behind the scenes footage of the giant stage called The Volume. It's a replacement for green screen because basically Basically, they can, in real time, project the background. The actors are actually getting lit by the environment around them, and just like if they were there in person. You get things like reflections in metal that are accurate to the environment. You get just like the color being cast onto the actors. This is just a digital version of that. We will add a large orb, and we will texture the large orb to be the most reflective orb anyone has ever seen. And now it's reflecting the environment perfectly. I've been doing some work for the professor over we're at Talarian Community College. He's been making some sketches and uh, he asked me to do some of the effects for a couple of them. So he did a video with uh, this uh, Teferi cosplayer and wanted me to put this phone next to his head as he was like talking on the phone. It was kind of jittery, so I just smoothed the keyframes so that it just kind of floated more than actually like stuck. And then I offset the whole thing by like 10 frames or something. It just kind of like drags behind the motion of his head, um, which is already a, a big step forward because it's going to look a lot different than if you had just stuck like a, a photograph of a phone in After Effects. I took photos uh, that the professor sent me of the set and, and literally just stuck them on planes and then built this awful garbage room. Because the phone isn't going to do a perfect reflection, right? It's not like it's going to be a mirror. What matters more is, is like the colors and their proximity to the 3D object. These energy particles that I made in After Effects, uh, they actually are reflected in the reflective parts of the phone as they rotate around. And then, I don't know if it helps, I'll build like a really basic geometry just in case there's like a shadow or a color reflection and we end up with these horrible abominations. One day these things are going to escape and they're going to kill me in my sleep. I don't know how, but I won't be surprised. Another one I was very happy about doing for the uh, Talarian video was uh, this watch close-up uh, where he wanted uh, the hands of the watch to like spin around like this because he's in like a timeless void. I had him send me a, a close-up shot of the watch and then actually just reconstructed the entire watch face in Blender so that I could rebuild the hands and then just animate them. The watch face itself is just a screenshot that I grabbed and then I went into Photoshop and just painted out the uh, 
the hands that were already there. But the great thing about this is that like the lighting's already baked in. Like he's he's just holding the watch almost perfectly still. There's barely any change to it. So I just took an image and then just stuck it on there. Uh, and I think the, mo the most impressive thing is honestly the tracking, which is again I feel like I feel like most of the really impressive things that happen uh, on any of these is almost entirely uh, Blender's doing. Like it's not me. I'm just learning like which button to push to make the thing happen. But like it's all happening very automatically. And like these are all fun. Adding digital objects to scenes is cool, but for me, being able to just construct entire environments that I otherwise did not have access to, that's like the dream. The first time I was actually able to test this method out was on the Zombie Experts in a Different Apocalypse video. It feels like it shouldn't be possible. It feels like cheating. This is the original shot. Ian and the desk and a couple things on the wall immediately behind him. You'll see all of these napkins on the wall put there to help with motion tracking, and it turns out I I didn't need them. The blender tracker is so good uh, that you almost don't need tracking points anymore. It can it can just find enough trackable points that you never would have even tried. And then I had to cover the napkins up. So uh, lesson learned. You do the same thing that I did in the other shots where you project the image onto just like a plane. And then from there you can uh, you can cut parts out. You can add things in and you can just start building the scene around that footage. First thing I did was build out the basic geometry of the room just as I sort of found the space, which is, uh, I think, my favorite part. It lets you uh, carve pieces out of the scene as well. So like if I wanted to, say, put a window in this wall, highlight a little area here, and then I could just I could just delete it. And then once I had all of the basic uh, geometry figured out, I started just decorating the room. The less clear you can make the seam between real and CGI, the better. So that's why I have bits sort of like dipping in up here. I have one fake thing on the wall. You don't know exactly where the seam is, you know? It's not just like, oh, okay, here's like, the line and then everything over here is CGI and everything over here is actual footage. One thing I did have to kind of come up with was um, the, the carpet. Uh, I couldn't really remove Ian from the carpet easily, so I knew it had to be in there, but I didn't want the ground to necessarily be carpet. I wanted to extend the floor, so I just cut it out and turned it into a rug. And just to highlight that it was a rug, I added another rug over here. <laughs> One of the easiest ways to sell this uh, combination of CG and real footage is lighting. And if you can get really specific directional lighting, especially one that's visible in the shot, uh, that you can then duplicate in the computer, it goes a long way towards selling it as a real thing. So this whole scene is lit by one prominent light that's off screen, and then Ian's desk lamp. Everything else in the scene then matches Ian and the desk and the shadows that are already being cast. Not only that, but you can adjust the camera motion to a degree. The best example of this is actually the one that started this whole process out, which is the Crusader King video. This is my digital stage right here. This is just like, it's just like a, a moving cardboard cutout of me. Uh, and it's playing the animation of, you know, of me walking around. I pay no attention to the weird uh, ghost feet. Obviously this would only look right from one particular angle, but if I just adjust it a little bit, just kind of have the camera drift down and zoom in and press forward, uh, then you have like what feels like this big camera arm and the perspective on me actually isn't changing here at all because it's just a flat image but it's changing on everything around me enough that your brain is tricked into just assuming that this scene visually makes sense. Oh, I actually did even more than that. I forgot. I'm turning. That's the, the secret here. In the actual footage, I'm walking and then the camera is moving at the same speed but in exactly the opposite direction. Uh, and then it and then it seems like the camera is the thing that's moving instead. I showed this off already in a different video on the same channel, but the entire audience is just DoodleCon because I, I just needed like vague human shapes uh, from the from the, the background perspective. Uh, and, uh, and I, I wanted, um, the world to burn, I guess. I don't know why I keep doing this kind of thing. If you want to know about any of this in more detail or, uh, just support me and, and my work over here on this channel, you can go to patreon.com slash Kyle C. Sullivan. I've already uploaded multiple things there, including an entire extra video showing how I made the copy Kyle model. I've also uploaded, uh, some digital assets. And in the future, what I probably will do is start releasing longer uncut versions of these videos. And I'm going to make some videos just exclusively for Patreon. 
Patreon, uh, like a detailed look at how I do photo scans and stitch them together using some of the photos that you guys have already sent in, like this lovely pigeon man. So if you want to see how I do that, uh, consider donating $5 over on Patreon and getting access to that exclusive sweet content. Let's do another end plate!